welcome and see how I use my Arsenal photo skills to create different and creative results the Leica Q3. So whether you're eyeing a new camera update or you want some fresh photo video ideas, we're diving into this creative process on this shoot. I was on the wait list for the Leica Q3 for quite some time, a few months, and I was actually worried by the time I made these videos that it would be too late. But luckily when I got the email that the camera was on its way, it lined up perfectly with this road trip that I had planned with my cousin Isa. Her sister was visiting the States for the first time, so it was our job to show her around the West Coast. So we took a road trip from LA to Vegas, and then from there we were gonna drive them from Vegas back to LA to show them around here. The goal is to create great memories and also take a shit ton of photos. Since we were touring with my cousin, of course we were gonna hit up a lot of touristy areas, which means we need a lot of patience to wait our turn. Or something that I actually learned was using the random people and find interesting shots with them. You can't pose these people. I mean, you can, but I'm an introvert, so I ain't talking to nobody. So I learned how to work with the world around me as it was on its own time. Like this shot of the gondola at the Venetian, or this lady outside the Griffith Observatory that was perfectly in this frame. And I love using frame within a frame. I use it a ton on this trip. I think it's so visually interesting and it's so satisfying when you actually find it in the wild. I watched a ton of Leica Q3 videos already because it's been out for months, and I noticed because of its compact size, a lot of people People were using it for street photography. And obviously I was gonna do a little bit of that myself too, but I wanted to try different scenarios. I wanted to try night shots and performances and portraits and nature and architecture and artwork and also test all the different colors because it is a Leica. Just pretty much anything I could find that was visually interesting to me. I use the Leica Q3 for all this footage with the 28 fixed lens. It is such a beautifully designed classic camera, so obviously I was gonna take some selfies with me holding it in the mirror. Mirrors and reflections are an easy way to show yourself in frame or something else. The tilt screen on this version changed the game, so obviously I was playing with low angles and high angles. For video, I shot in 4K 60, even though it does shoot up to 8K, but I didn't wanna go through hella storage. For color profiles, I use it on neutral. For photos, I actually shot it in medium JPEG, which was 36 megapixels, even though it does go up to 60 megapixels. Again, wanted to save on storage. And I shot this in standard picture profile. I still ended up with nine cards after the five day trip. Because it's a Leica, I had so much confidence in its image quality and also was super curious about what the colors would turn out in each image, so I filmed a lot. The more you shoot, the better your photos and videos will turn out when you narrow it down later. If you haven't watched my full Leica Q review, what are you doing? You could put that on your queue after you watch this, because now we're gonna get into some juicy techniques and tips. I sprinkled a lot of techniques throughout this video, but here are some more of my favorites. Symmetry, leading lines, stairs. I have a visual thing with staircases. I don't know where it came from, but if you ever find cute stairs, use them. You can also use this technique with roads and architecture too. Just anywhere that has lines leading towards your subject. Or you can create vantage points where it just goes, oh, what's over there? Let's go. I don't know why, but a big pet peeve of mine has always been blurry or out of focus photos, but lately I've been challenging that. You can do this intentionally if you wanna create some nice bokeh balls, or if you wanna be in focus in the background and have your subject, AKA me, be out of focus, looking off into a distance. Sometimes you gotta try stuff that you thought you never liked. You could try different subjects or backgrounds, like architecture, still life, and maybe just use your hands if you don't wanna show your face and want it more point of view. Movement makes images more dynamic, so try to get that when you can, even if you're just pretending to walk in one area. I know it looks weird, I know it feels super awkward when you're doing it, but the photos always come out looking great. I can make a whole video about lighting and I'm pretty sure I've made several at this point, but backlight is something special to me. It can make someone's hair glow all heavenly, or it could add nice shapes to your subjects and create separation from the background. Another way to add separation is by using depth of field and opening up your aperture. This creates a blurry background so you can get rid of distractions if it's too much. 
You can also play with distance in a frame. For instance, I like using foreground elements and keeping them just a little bit out of focus. It just adds that little something extra. Make sure you still create balance within your image. So if one side feels too heavy, move things around or figure it out until it feels just right you'll know. Have fun! Of course you can still take those classic touristy photos. Not everything has to be IG worthy. It's all good as long as you're generally enjoying it in the moment and having fun. Not everything has to be so serious all the time. I film a lot and I film all day, so one of the biggest challenges for me was having only one battery. Note to self, ask for extra batteries next time. But luckily it never died on me because the Q3 actually has USB-C charging unlike the previous Q2. So while we were driving to the next locations, I was charging it in the car. You gotta do what you gotta do. Touristy locations can be a challenge. Luckily for Photoshop AI, it makes it really easy to delete people if you need to. But this challenge did teach me how to be a street photographer, which is something I never really do. I don't take photos of random people unless I'm working an event and I'm getting paid to be there. It's always been awkward for me, I don't know about you. But the form factor of this camera got me more comfortable to try it out and I actually got some good shots too. It helped me capture random live moments and help me be a little bit more spontaneous. Because it's a fixed lens, I had a limited focal length. Normally I like the extremes, like super wide, between like 18 to 24 at least, or like super close ups. Because this lens was 28 millimeters, this was in a range that I'm not normally used to working with. With the crop modes on this camera, which made it 50 millimeters, 75 millimeters, and 90 millimeters, I got some close ups of the performers, for instance, with the same lens. I just still wish it was a little bit wider. It was so easy to carry this little camera around, so I was filming whatever it is I wanted. It really helped that my cousin Isa has a good eye for photography and also knows how to pose, so it did make things a lot easier. My other cousin Irene is more into the same pose, so it was really fun trying to get her to do different things. We were playing with silhouettes and also telling her to change her body positions to create triangles and also look off into a certain distance and not stare directly into camera. Because we are family and known each other our entire lives, it was really easy to just laugh at each other when we would make weird faces. Candid shots also came out really good. <laughs> Look on the camera. I know what she looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Either just natural ones with my cousin on her phone at the beach or ones where people are sleeping or eating. Even the embarrassing ones are fun too. I'm keeping those ones forever. Favorite shots. Like I said, I have a thing for stairs. I should seriously consider making a whole Instagram account just on this topic and theme. For lighting, my photo with me walking down the hall. Oh, the golds in this came out so good. For colors, I really like this gigantic bear that was in Vegas. For randomness, this cute couple under the tree with the Hollywood sign. Oh, just adorbs. Isa with the yellow van, because it just so happened to match her outfit. It's little moments like these where you're just like, Oh, how perfect. And lastly, any moment with my cousins because having fun with them is of course the most important thing. There's so much more I wanted to talk about, but this video is getting kind of long. So make sure you subscribe for some more camera knowledge goodies. You do you fam, and I'll see you when I see you. Done. That's a wrap. Doo -doo -doo -doo.